1828, a man named George Green decided to write a theory on how electricity works. Now, this was kind of remarkable because Green was not a mathematician. In fact, he had no formal education at all. He taught himself math while working in his dad's mill. And he published a paper which only 51 people bought copies of, and none of them really understood it, mostly just friends of his who I guess were trying to humor him. But after he died, Lord Kelvin got a handle on it and publicized it for the whole world to see. And it was groundbreaking. Now, one of the big things that comes up when we're talking about electricity and this green dealt with in person was let's say you have a big metal plate and you put a charge on it what happens to it well the charge since a charge tries to isolate itself it will all go out to the edges and so how the charge affects the world can be determined based on what goes on along the edges. And so what we are going to talk about in Green's Theorem today, the topic of today's lecture, is how we can relate some of the calculus happening on the boundary of a set with what goes on inside the set. And that is our core idea for today. How does boundary relate to interior. <clears throat> well, if you think about the fundamental theorem of calculus back in Calc 1, it kind of has a similar thing. If we had an interval from A to B, and we wanted to integrate over this entire interval, the fundamental theorem of calculus says we can just take the boundary, the point B minus the point A, and get the answer to the integral. So that's another case of taking the inside of a set related to its boundary. So let's talk about how we can do this in multivariable calculus. So a couple definitions we need first. The positive orientation of a simple curve is a counterclockwise direction if you're looking from above. Where a simple closed curve means it doesn't cross itself and it comes back to where it started at the end. So by the right hand rule it points out of the page as you travel the curve the interior is on your left. So if I have a curve of any sort, this curve here, this would be the positive direction. Because if you imagine an ant walking along the boundary, the inside would always be on the ant's left. The other definition we had is the two-dimensional curl. Now we kind of talked about this when we were doing conservative vector fields. We've got a vector field P plus Q, PI plus QJ. And so we do a little determinant to get del qx minus del py. And that is the, um, that is the, called the curl. Now usually it's three-dimensional. I don't think the book defines two-dimensional curl this way, but I do. I think it makes more sense. Because what we basically said was a conservative vector field is one where the curl is always zero. So let's do this again. It's del del x, del del y, p, q, gives del q, del x, minus del p, del y. Yes, that's correct. So we're calling this the curl of f, where f is just any vector field of form p, i, plus q, j. And the determinant is helpful because for me, I always mix up what order these should be in, and obviously it makes a difference. It'll change the sign if you get the order backwards. So, 
Let's see how we can find this. Let's do an example. f of xy equals x squared i minus 2xyj. Find and interpret the curl at these three points, 3, 4, 3, 0, and 3, negative 4. So let's go ahead and do that. All right. So if f is x squared i minus 2xyj, then curl of f is del del x del del y x squared negative 2xy, which would be negative 2y minus 0, or just negative 2y. So what would the curl be at different points? Well, we have the point 3, 4. So it's about here. So if I plug in curl of f at 3, 4, that would be 2 or negative 2 times 4 or negative 8. Now what does it mean for the curl to be negative 8 at the point? Well, what curl represents is basically how, if we imagine this is a big pool of water, how is the water swirling around there? This is negative 8, so that's the clockwise direction. So that means at this point, we've essentially got little pools of water going in the, counter, in the clockwise direction. Curl F at 3, 0 would be negative 2 times 0 or 0. So at this point, 3, 0, there are no swirls around. Maybe there's some moving one way and some moving the other, but they cancel each other out. In net, it comes out to no rotation about it. And then at 3, negative 4, curl of, curl of f at 3, negative 4, you give me negative 2 times negative 4 or positive 8. So here, the jets would go in the counterclockwise direction because a positive value means counterclockwise rotation. So that's basically what we mean when we say if the curl is positive, we mean that near that place it's rotating counterclockwise. If it's negative, it means that near that place it's rotating clockwise. And so if you had a vector field graph with all the little arrows, you could pick out a point and say, well, does it look like there are more arrows going counterclockwise or clockwise? Or maybe the only arrows are going like straight through it. And if that's the case, then you'd say there is no curl. It would be zero. All right. So Green's theorem here, it says that we can do an integral around the outside of a curve or we can do the integral on the inside if we change it to curl. So let's read through the theorem. Let's see be a positively oriented, piecewise smooth, simple closed curve in R squared. So that's a complicated definition, but positive oriented means it's going counterclockwise. Piecewise smooth, meaning there aren't too many sharp corners. There, there could be a finitely many number, but there wouldn't be infinitely many, hopefully. Simple, meaning that it comes back to itself. Or no, simple meaning it doesn't cross itself. Close, meaning it comes back to itself, to where it started. And D, be the region bounded by C. If P and Q have continuous partial derivatives on open region containing D, then this line integral. Now this, you may not have seen this before, but this circle integral here, it means a line integral on a closed curve. That circle is just emphasizing that the curve we're integrating over comes back to it where it started. And because it's going in back to where it started, it doesn't matter what our starting point or our ending point is as long as it's they're the same. So if we write as p dx plus q dy, well, this would be the same as the double integral of the curl over dA. Or in other words, del Q del X minus del P del Y DA. 
Now you remember we said a conservative vector field is where this thing is zero. So if it's a conservative vector field, then every closed curve would give an integral of zero. But that's exactly what conservative means, that you have a potential function and so all closed curves integrate to zero. So this stuff ties together. Now this, some of these definitions are a little complicated, so let's draw a picture. What I'm saying is we've got some curve that goes in the counterclockwise direction and it comes back to itself. And so the inside of this is called D, and the curve itself is called C. Now there is a thing in there about P and Q have continuous partials on an open set containing D. Open region containing D. What's that mean? Well, it basically just means that we could draw a region just a little bigger and all the derivatives work nice on there. So you wouldn't want it to be like the derivatives fail right on the boundary. That would mess it up. But as long as you just sort of overshoot by just a little and say all the derivatives work nice inside there, then that's fine. Because we want the derivative to be well defined on the boundary and it's kind of hard to define derivatives on a boundary. So we're just sort of rounding up a little extra just so that we can be sure the derivative is going to work at all the points on this boundary. So let's put this into action. All right, evaluate this line integral of x to the fourth dx plus xy dy, where c is a triangle with vertices at 0, 0, 1, 0, and 0, 1 traveled counterclockwise. All right. So, we have a region is this, a uh, perfectly straight triangle, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, going in this direction positively oriented. And my assumption of why is this positive is because it's the same as in trigonometry where on the unit circle you go around counterclockwise. Why is that the rule? I think it goes back to Descartes, but I'm not sure. All right, so if we wanted to do this integral, integral along C of x fourth dx plus xy dy, now we would have to do three separate parameterizations to do this. And that seems like it might take a while. We could do it, I'm sure. We all know how to do it, but it would take a while. So maybe it'll be better to use Green's theorem. So what would the curl here be? Well, we'd have del del x, del del y, x fourth, x y. Which would give me y minus zero or just y. So this integral is the same as the double integral of y dA across this region R. Or you call it D if you want to. Well, let's see, what's the equation for this line? It would be y equals negative x plus one. So this double integral would be y dy dx, where y goes from, go vertically, from 0 to negative x plus 1, then x goes left to right from 0 to 1. So then that's 0, 1 from y is 0 to y is negative x plus 1 of y squared over 2 dx, which would be 0, 1 of negative x plus 1 squared over 2 dx.
or one half zero one of x squared minus two x plus one dx I guess I didn't need to do that. I could have done that using u sub. Eh. One half zero one of x cubed over three minus x squared plus x would be one half one third minus one plus one or one over six. So that was a double integral. We could, like I said, we could have done it without Green's theorem. But I think having to split this up to three separate parameterizations and do all of them directly probably would have taken a lot longer than just this trick. So uh, here's the whole thing if you want to take a screenshot. Alright, let's go on to the next. Now, look at that thing. <clears throat> this closed integral along of 3y minus e to the sine x dx plus 7x plus square root of y to the fourth plus 1 dy, where c is a circle center and 0, 0 with radius 3. This should immediately get you thinking, Green's theorem. And the reason is because, unlike the last one, there is no way we could do this integral. e to the sine x, the derivative or the antiderivative of that, I have no idea what that would be. Same with square root of y to the fourth plus one dy. Again, both of those are the kind of things where like, you might try u sub, but then you'll find out you need a du. Second one, you might think there's a trig sub, but that looks complicated too. So if you see one, one of these closed integrals here, and it looks really complicated, it's probably a trick question, and the trick is Green's Theorem. So let's see if we can do this with Green's Theorem and make it a little easier. Mm. Okay. And by the way, this is definitely the sort of thing they might like to put on a final exam to just try and scare you. Closed integral of 3y minus e to the sine x dx plus 7x plus root of y fourth plus 1 dy. And we need to draw the path here. It was a circle centered at 0, 0 with radius 3. So we're going along this closed path C. And like I said, since it's the full path, it doesn't matter where you start because it's always the same curve. And so it's just adding up. With so, let's see if we can get the curl on this guy. Del, del x, del, del y, 3y minus e to the sine x, 7x plus root y fourth plus 1. So let's do the uh, derivatives here. That means we get 7 if we go down the main diagonal and minus 3 going up the other diagonal. That whole thing, that whole ugly thing just turns out to be 4. <clears throat> so it ends up as double integral of 4 dA across the region. Now since this is constant, this is just the same as 4 times the area of R. So we don't even need to do uh, antiderivatives and stuff. We're going to say it's 4 times the area of the shape, which is 4 times pi r squared, or 36 pi. That's it. <clears throat> I want to give an idea of why this works. There's a whole proof of course but I don't want to focus on the proof too much here's what I want to think about we said curl at any point is like little rotations so at every point what's the rotation going to be what this is basically saying or at least a way to remember it is if you're trying to do the curl around the outside like how much do you get if you go all the way on the outside 
the same as if you add up all these little curls on the inside. Why is that? I don't know. It's a little hard to explain. There are, I don't, we're not going to get into whole proofs here, but it's a really powerful tool. It lets you switch between the inside and the outside. You go to a Dublin and go to the more complicated, but by taking derivatives, you make the integrand a lot simpler. What about the other way? What if we started with area integral and wanted to go backwards to a line integral? Certainly we could do that. You know, the area of any shape is the double integral of 1 dA. So if we have a function whose curl is 1, we can convert to line integral. So there are a few options, but this is the most commonly used one, I think. The area of a shape would be 1 half times the line integral of x dy minus y dx. So you can try this for yourself here. If you do the curl on this, uh, these will each give you 1, so it's or 1 and negative 1, so it ends up as 2, but then times 1 half makes it 1. So I think there are probably some homework questions like that, like take an area problem and then find out what the perimeter is. So, for example, what is the area of an ellipse? x squared over a squared plus y squared or b squared equals 1. You might not know that there's a formula for the area of an ellipse. There is. Surprisingly, there is no formula for the perimeter of an ellipse. It's It can't be done, apparently. At least as far as I know. There's no known formula. I don't know if it's possible. Maybe someday someone in this class will come up with one, but I don't know if that's possible or not. All right, so if we want the area of this ellipse, we'll call it D here. The area of D is the same as one half integral on C, that's closed integral, of x dy minus y dx. Now the equation was x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals 1. The parameterization for this, you need to memorize this one, I'm pretty sure. For an ellipse, it's similar to a circle, because an ellipse is just the same equation as a circle, but stretched out. But it's a cosine of t, i plus b sine t, j. If you plugged in this for x and this for y, the a squared and the b squared would divide out. You get cosine squared plus sine squared, which is 1. So then, this is x, this is y. x prime would be negative a sine t. y prime would be b cosine t. So the integral here would be 1 half integral from, I guess, oh yeah, and the parameters, when you do this parameterization, the bounds are t goes from 0 to 2 pi. So from 0 to 2 pi, we're getting rid of the circle integral and doing it as a regular integral from 0 to 2 pi. x, so it's a cosine t times dy, which is b cosine t dt. Oh, there should be a dt on both of these. Minus y, which is b sine t, and then dx is negative a sine t dt, which is one half and over from zero to pi of a b cosine squared t plus a b sine squared t dt. 1 half 0, 2 pi. Well, the cosine curve of sine squared is 1, so we just get a, b, dt. So this is a constant, so we get 1 half times 2 pi, a, b. Or pi, a, b. That's the area of an ellipse. 
And it matches what we know about a circle, because a circle is an ellipse where A and B are the same thing. If we squash them together, A and B are both R. If they're the same size, it's a circle. And so you plug in A and B for both R, it'd be pi R squared. So it fits. All right, what else we got? Let's do an example where it is not simply connected. Green's theorem, it requires a simple closed curve, and D is the whole region in there, and P and G have to be continuous partial derivatives on some region. So let's look at this kind of weird example. Negative Y, I plus X, J over X squared plus Y squared. So, fxy is negative y i plus x j and we want to see what it looks like on any positively oriented simple closed curve c that encloses the origin. So when you see a question like that, that's for like a proof of any kind, it's good to start with a simple kind. The simplest kind then would be the unit circle. Now this is a conservative vector field. The curl here would be del del x del del y, negative y, x, which would be 1, no, it's not. Is it conservative? Um, maybe it's not. I don't know. It's one plus one. Is that right? Do I have that? Well, okay. Maybe I was wrong about that part. But we're, and there's a denominator too that might have something to do with it. Regardless, the Green's theorem wouldn't work anyway, even if the curl, even if we found the curl because there's a big hole right here in the middle. So instead, yeah. Oh yeah, I, did, I didn't want to work it out, but del del x of the y component is x, or x squared plus y squared, which is negative x squared plus y squared, or x squared plus y squared, squared and then if you do del del y of the second component of the y component you get the same thing so when you subtract them you get zero so you can test that on yourself if you like but it doesn't really matter because we can't use the curl here because it's got a big hole in the middle so our Green's theorem would say it would have to be some larger set where the derivatives are fine everywhere and there in the center the derivatives don't even exist there because the denominator is zero so instead we can do an old-fashioned parameterization trick we can say well okay well let's do this r of t is cosine t sine t and so we'll just do this one the old-fashioned way r prime of t would be negative sine t cosine t so then integral closed integral of f dot dr would be integral of negative y over x squared plus y squared i guess from zero to pi or well no we're not plugging we'll leave it as c for now Because I don't want to bother the parameterization just yet. X over X squared plus Y squared. Dot. Oh, I messed this up. Or, well, no, I guess we do need to plot. We do need to go ahead and parameterize. Let's go ahead and do that. Um, let's see. Okay. Uh, okay, so the X component, the I component mean negative Y over X squared plus Y squared. So it'll be negative R sine T 
over r squared because that's squared plus y squared is r squared. And the second part, the y component would be r cosine t over r squared dot. Then r prime is negative sine t cosine t dt. Uh, t goes from 0 to 2 pi. So we go from 0 to pi of, let's see, the first component would be negative r sine squared. I left off. Something's wrong here. Oh, it shouldn't be an r here because we're on the unit circle. All right, this right, I'm kind of messing this up. Shouldn't be r. r is 1, so we can get rid of all those. So it's just, ah, that's, that's a lot easier. Sine squared t plus cosine squared t dt. So you're just 2 pi, or what's it? It's 2 pi because it's 0, 2 pi of this is 1 dt. So it's 2 pi. Now it said for any closed curve. So how do we know that it works for any closed curve? Well, here's the idea. And I'm not going, this is not a formal proof. You don't have to. You're not going to be expected to do this, at least not on one of my tests, and probably, I'm sure not on an exam either. Maybe on homework, but even then probably not. Let's say we've got some weird curve like this. Well, here's the trick. You say, well, I know a normal curve here, the unit circle. I know that's 2 pi. And so what I do is I open up a little hole in the path. I say, I... I don't mind to erase the whole thing. Let's strike out a little piece here and a little piece here. And we'll say from here we do this. So our curve is a weird, complicated curve. It's this. We'll go along here and then back out and then along here. then back in. They call this a keyhole curve because it's got it looks kind of like a keyhole if you turn your head sideways. The point is that now the inside of our region is this. This region no longer has any holes in it. Our new curve, this yellow curve, has no places inside where the derivative doesn't exist. So along the yellow curve the curl is zero, so the integral is just zero. Along the inner curve, we know it's about 2 pi, because we cut off a tiny bit, so that won't change it much. The red curve, if we go on the red curve, you're going in the opposite direction. You're going clockwise along it, so the, the inner curve, the black curve, plus red curve is yellow curve. Well, we know the black curve is 2 pi. We know the yellow curve is 0. And again, this is not exactly 2 pi, but it's very close because we just cut a tiny bit off. So we can assume we can take a limit there to cover that last bit. So the red curve must be negative 2 pi. But since it was clockwise, if we went the red curve in counterclockwise direction, it would be 2 pi. So the red curve and the black curve are just different versions of the same thing almost. Anyway, that's an example of a, a topological proof that has to do with simple connectivity, how you can take a weird curve and as long as you could sort of smush it down into a circle, then it'll act the same as a circle. So anyway, that was kind of a side issue that will not come up too much, but I just wanted to give you a taste of something else we can do. Let's do a few more examples. Evaluate this integral, y cubed dx plus x cubed plus 3xy squared dy. C is a closed curve following y equals x cubed from 0, 0 to 1, 1. y equals x from 1, 1 to 0, 0. Okay, so what's that saying? Well... 
Here's zero, zero. Here's one, one. So we are first going along this way. Y equals X to the third on the way up and then back along y equals x. And it should be positively oriented. Uh, it doesn't say positively oriented, but well, I guess it would be because we're going from 0, 0 to 1, 1 along x cubed, and then back along x, so it would have the region would be on the left the whole time. Okay, so integral, closed integral c, y cubed dx, plus x cubed plus 3xy squared dy. So again, we could do a parameterization of this. It wouldn't be too bad. Or we can try the curl. Del del x, del del y, y to the third, x third minus 3xy squared. This would give us 3x squared minus 3y squared. No, wait, hold on. Is it plus? Is there a pl There's a plus here. Sorry, my bad. Three, so 3xy squared plus 3y squared minus 3y squared is 3x squared. So that looks like it'll be simpler. So we'll just do the double integral across the region D of 3x squared dA. So I'm going to erase this curl calculation here. At this point, I'm tempted to just say finish on your own, but eh, I, it shouldn't take too bad. Be too bad. I think we could use a little more practice on this anyway. So 3x squared. I'm going to do y first. Um, well, I could do x first. Uh, let's see. Yeah, let's do y first. dy dx. So y goes from x to the third up to x because it's going upward. And x goes left from 0 to 1. That would give us... Um, just for practice, though, if we wanted to do x first, let's say x goes on the left from y, and on the right, x would be cube root of y. And then y going up and down goes 0, 1. But I'm not going to do that one, so it's just there for the practice of changing the order. If you don't understand how that worked, though, I would suggest look over this and make sure you understand how the order changing worked. But anyway, this is 0, 1. y is x third to y is x of 3x squared y dx, which is 0, 1, uh, 3x cubed minus 3x to the 5th dx. Alright, let's do one last example. So C is the border of the semi-annulus between the circles of radius 1 and 3, center of the origin of the upper half plane. Find the integral around C of this ugly integral. And as usual, if it doesn't say, let's assume C is positively oriented. Though they could trick you on some of these and give you one that's negatively oriented. And yet, if that happens, you need to remember to put in a minus sign. So, what does that look like? Well, that means we're dealing with a shape like this. So, here's our grid. And we, are have, we have this. Radius is 1, radius is 3. These perfect semicircles here. Ugh. Trying to get it just right, yeah. Had one statistics professor told me that everyone gets like a certain number of perfect circles to draw in their life. And so, anyway. So we're going to integrate... The positive direction would be like this. The 
so we need to work out the curl on this one because it's clearly not going to be able to do by direct parameterization. So del over del x, del over del y, arc tan x plus y squared, and e to the y minus x squared. So if we work this out, it goes negative x or negative two x minus two y. Okay, so that's the thing we need to integrate across this region. So let's double integral this. DA. That would be, let's see, negative 2 double integral of x plus y DA. This region should make you think of polar coordinates. What we've got is R goes from 1 to 3, theta goes from 0 to pi. So this is definitely a, this is a polar rectangle. So we should change this to polar coordinates. So it'll become negative 2 double integral of r cos theta plus r sine theta and then extra r dr d theta. r from 1 to 3, theta from 0 to pi. then becomes negative 2, uh, this is factorable, 0 to pi cosine theta plus sine theta d theta and 1 to 3 of r squared dr. So that's negative 2, 0 to pi of sine theta minus cosine theta and 1 to 3 of r cubed over 3. And this becomes negative 2 of let's see sine pi minus cosine pi minus sine 0 minus cosine 0. This and then the other part 3 and 1, we need both of them to be 27 over 3 minus 1 over 3. What do we get then? We get negative 2. All right, the signs are gone. They're all 0. Cosine pi is negative 1, so it's 1 plus 1. And then 26 over 3, which is negative 104 over 3. All right, so that's the basics of Green's Theorem. Be prepared for a quiz, and I will see you there.